what I want to start with today in Photoshop is actually showing you how you can create a very effective concept drawing without the use of a um, expensive render engine. If, if all you want to do is work in SketchUp and Photoshop to create your drawing to help communicate your idea, there is absolutely a way to do that. And let's go over the, some of the methods that we use here in the studio, and hopefully that'll inspire you to work towards finding your own ways of creating these drawings. So what we have here on the screen is our line layer exported from SketchUp, our color select layer, our base render without any lines, and this is not a render from a render engine, this is the render from, uh, this is the material layer from SketchUp. And then we have SketchUp shadows that were exported. So let's show you how we can start layering these to build the base of our drawing. So I typically start with the line drawing layer in Photoshop. You certainly don't have to do that. It's just how I start layering my Photoshop file. Again, this is really about you finding your own voice in communicating your ideas. This is one method that's very comfortable for me. So I'm gonna walk you through how I do it. And if you wanna do it in a slightly different way, I'd say that that's wonderful. So what I'm gonna do is I have my line layer open and right now it's on layer background in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click that layer and I'm gonna call it SketchUp Lines and hit okay. Now that's gonna give me the ability to move that layer up and down in my stack. And when I use the term stack, which I'm gonna do a couple times today, all that means is basically how my layers are stacking on top of one another in Photoshop. So I'm gonna come over here to color select. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a command A on the keyboard for a select all, a command C for copy. And then we're gonna do a command shift paste. Or if you come over here to edit, paste special, paste into place, all right? So now what's gonna happen is my color select layer is gonna come directly on top of my line layer and I don't have to worry about lining those two layers up. I'm gonna do the same thing here with the render, command all, command copy, come over here to the lines, command shift V, or again, edit, paste special, paste in place. And you can see over here on my stack, I've got now three layers. So let's name layer one, color select. We're going to name a layer two, SketchUp render. Again, this is not from a render engine. This is directly from SketchUp. Finally, we're going to grab the shadows. So command all, copy, paste in place. Let's call this SketchUp shadows. Now, how are we going to get all these to start working in concert with one another? Because as you can see here, I've pasted in my shadow layer and that's hiding everything else that I've got going on. So let's talk about how we're going to start layering our stack over here on the left hand side of the screen. Typically the way I like to work is I'm going to drag my SketchUp line layer to the very top of that stack. So that's showing through. Then if I adjust the Photoshop layer to multiply, what multiply does is it takes all the white all the light tones out of a layer for you. So now all we're left with is the black SketchUp line work. So SketchUp lines are now on multiply. I have SketchUp shadows here. If I turn SketchUp shadows to multiply, now both the lines and the shadows are shining through and you get the materials underneath. The render layer, we're gonna keep it normal. And the color select layer, we're actually gonna keep it at normal under the render layer. And what you can do here is you can actually hide that layer. It doesn't have to be visible. You just want that for quick selections. So now we've got three layers directly exported from SketchUp that are now the bones of our rendering. My background in architectural visual communication is actually with hand drawing. And when we constructed a hand drawn rendering, it was typically done on a toothy paper or on sketch paper. There's a lot of different layers to the line work. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to replicate a lot of the looseness of a hand-drawn rendering into this digital file. The other reason we like doing that is we feel like design is, a, is an iterative process and there's a lot of conversation between you and the client. And the more you can make the client feel like they're engaged in the design process, the better the end product is gonna be. And if you show them a photo real rendering at an early stage of the process, they might feel like you're trying to show them final architecture. So our theory here in the studio is the softer the drawing at the early stages of the project, the better. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a um, texture file. And this texture file is going to be a paper file. So if I open that, and what I've done is I found a couple paper textures that I like on the internet. I encourage everyone to go out and find their own favorite textures, create your own textures, uh, find something that works for you. I've spent a little bit of time and developed something that I really am happy with. So what I'm doing is I've pulled texture files into, into the Photoshop file. <clears throat> you can see I have two of them here. I have a paper texture one and a paper texture two. Those for me are set to soft light. And again, you can do anything that works for you. I personally like using them at a lower opacity just because what we're trying to do is get the tooth of the paper to shine through on the drawing. We don't want it to distract from the actual design of the drawing. So I'm lowering the opacity. And what that does, let's zoom in here a little bit. As you can see, it just starts roughening up the SketchUp render here a little bit. So if I hide those, it feels a little more sharp, a little more computer generated. But if I add back in the paper texture, we have some softness and a little bit of that hand done quality. Next thing I'm going to do is I always start by um, alt or altering the SketchUp lines here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag a copy to the bottom of my stack just so I've preserved an original SketchUp line layer. Now what I want to do is uh, alter the lines a little bit. And what I mean by that is if you think about how you draw in real life, you're putting a pencil to a piece of paper and that pencil line is going to be a little softer, a little more blurry. The line might not be perfect. The line may extend past where you meant to draw. And so we're going to try to pick up some of those imperfections in the sketch here. So on my SketchUp line layer, I'm just going to take the opacity down. Again, do what works for you. So my SketchUp lines are going to go to about 40% here. And you can see that what's happened is now I'm now looking at my paper texture behind the Photoshop uh, files here, or the Photoshop layers, excuse me. Quick and easy way to fix that, we'll just create a new layer here at the bottom of the stack. And we're going to move that right below SketchUp Render. So SketchUp Render is going to be the lowest, rent, the lowest layer on our stack. And then I'm just going to paint this white so we have white paper. So here's my colors. Paint it white. There we go. Now we have a white background. So now we're back on our SketchUp line layer. So I've turned the opacity down and I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so this is 100%. You know, find something that works for you. And then all I'm going to do is apply a bit of a blur to that line. And so now if I just isolate that layer and show you, what we've got is something a little bit more reminiscent of of a, a true pencil line. It's a little more blurry. Those imperfections feel a little bit more natural than uh, computer generated and jagged. So now we have line work. We have our paper texture. We have our shadows. And we have our SketchUp render. So we're well on our way. Let's talk about shadows here for a second. So if I isolate, let's hide the SketchUp render layer. Now I have line work and shadows, which to me always made one of the most attractive design drawings coming straight out of SketchUp anyway was hidden line with shadows. So I love just the look of, of a clean gray tone, grayscale drawing. So shadows in real life always take on a bit of a, a bluish hue. So what we can do is we can come up here and we're going to do a um, hue and saturation filter on them. So if I do edit, image, adjustment, hue and saturation, or command U, this little uh, layer pops up. What I like to do is I'll colorize it, and you can see it immediately turned it to a default red color here. We're going to move that more to a purplish blue hue. And this, again, is reminiscent of a lot of traditional watercolor paintings when um, watercolors would use a really nice bluish desaturated purple for shadows. So you can see here that now our shadows, instead of being a little bit more dead and gray, have now taken on a little bit more life. Now, another thing, again, this goes back to more traditional and hand drawing renderings, but water, when you use watercolors and the brush hits, hits the paper, what happens is you're going to get a little bit of paint buildup 
at the edges of where you're applying the color. So if I wanted this to feel a little bit more like a watercolor, I would actually want the shadows to feel like there's a little bit of paint buildup at the edge of the shadows. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I really urge each and every one of you to go out and, and kind of discover what method works for you. What I'm gonna do is just show you what it looks like using some actions that I've already created. So if I use that action, you can see that what's happened now is I've basically put a stroke around the shadow that mimics, in a way, paint buildup at the end of those shadow colors. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blur those edges. And that keyboard click you're hearing is just me applying the same filter over and over. So now we've got a little bit more of a, a blurred paint buildup line. If we go back to the layers, you see that I have SketchUp shadows. We can just call this one, what, what should we call this? Shadows, paint lines, whatever you wanna call it, whatever works for you. I'm at 90% opacity now, you can play with what works. I'm gonna lower that down so it's not so striking. And now we have a little bit of an edge to all our shadows. Next thing we can do is we can kind of come in here and I like to use um, what they call layer masks. And a layer mask is essentially a way for you to erase and add parts of a layer without permanently deleting them from your Photoshop file. So you're essentially adding a white or black mask over anything you're using in, in Photoshop. And to do that, come down here to the bottom of your stack and you'll see a little icon that is a square with a circle in the middle of that. We're just gonna add that and what it's done is created a little white box next to my, uh, layer, my SketchUp shadow layer. If I erase now, let's see, let's get a good paintbrush. I'm gonna come here to my paintbrushes, do a nice soft brush. I'm just gonna enlarge that a little bit here. <clears throat> And one thing to keep in mind is you can see here I have the opacity at 100% for my eraser. I certainly don't want to be that heavy handed with it. So if I turn that down, what we can do is we can start erasing out some of the shadows again to mimic maybe the more natural flow of paint on a brush or in reality shadows are going to get exceedingly lighter as they fall away from the subject matter. So now I can come in and I can just kind of, you know, have fun with it. This is all about being painterly. It's not about following any particular method. This is about finding a style that works for you, making that drawing work for you and your client. So all I've done is I've erased on my layer mask some of the shadows out just to give them a little bit more movement, a little bit of a gradient. And then if you wanted to, you could come in and um, burn a little bit of uh, some ambient, what they call ambient occlusion. So anywhere two surfaces are meeting, there's gonna be a little bit of a darker shadow. So on my SketchUp shadow layer, so not on the mask, we're actually gonna impact the actual art here, the art layer, so make sure you're over here. I'm gonna burn in a little bit of some darker shadows here in the architecture. And what I'm doing here is I'm holding, I'm clicking once with my mouse and then I'm holding shift and then clicking another point. And what that's gonna do in Photoshop is it's gonna allow you to draw a straight line from the, the, uh, the origin point that you clicked and then the next point. So in this case, I don't really want too much burning. And again, it's really about making the drawing work for you. Um, this is not, this is a totally different method than photorealistic renderings. We're, we're really just, kind of working the drawing as we're going along and kind of not to get too hippie on you, but almost let, letting the drawing work for us and letting the drawing speak to us about what, what really is going to work here for the image. So at that point, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty happy with it. Um, I feel like that's enough movement for now in the shadows. And we may come back to this. Once you leave a layer, you certainly can go back and adjust it even more as more and more of these components keep coming in. The other thing I like doing that I get a lot of questions about is I add a lot of construction lines into the rendering. And basically what we're doing is we're deconstructing the computer generated image into something that feels much more hand done. That's really the goal here of all these images. So what we're trying to do is mimic the fact that this SketchUp model and this SketchUp rendering has been done by hand. 
So if I create a new layer, and I'm going to call this pencil, just for, for now, I'm going to set the uh, mode to multiply. There's a lot of different ways in which you can do construction lines. Um, I urge you to find something that works for you. All I'm going to do is I'm going to use a paintbrush tool. I'm going to find a color that kind of mimics pencil. And you can come in here and you can start stroking some pencil lines. And, and really what I'm trying to do is a lot of architects will render Renderings were created using um, perspective line or lines of perspective, vanishing points. Um, I did a lot of drawing with a Mayline ruler, and what I would do is typically come in with a red pencil and do a lot of uh, measurements, and then mark that measurement and strike a line, and that helped me construct the elevation or the rendering that I was working on. And then I would come back over top of that in ink and finish the drawing in ink, but there would still be that layer of richness and that layer of workmanship underneath. And again, it's a style that I like using. If it doesn't work for you, totally fine. Um, if you want to do something a little bit different, you can do that too. So I'm just going to pretend like I was drawing this with a Mayline ruler or a straight edge, and I'm going to come in here and stroke some of my primary points on the building where I know I'd have a break. Again, all, all about what works for you. So you can click and hold shift, um, whatever, whatever works for you. So we can go here. You know, it just depends on how much time you want to take. Nothing has to be perfect either. That's the beauty of these drawings is the more, let's call them beautiful mistakes that you have in your drawing, the better, because then it just feels that much more authentic. So we're just going to go through and, you know, as you get more and more comfortable with your own style, this will become very intuitive to you. So I'm just going to lower the opacity so they're not overwhelming. And you can do as many or as little as you want here. Totally up to you in this method. I tend to hold shift because again, you get that straight line and it feels like you're drawing it with a straight edge. All right, so now we've got a pretty good, let's call it base to the drawing. We can turn back on the SketchUp render layer here and you can see that um, you know, the materiality is all still coming through. The shadows may be a little too saturated and dark, but again, this is just all a process and these things will all change. Don't get too worked up if the drawing isn't reading quite right, right away. This stuff is just going to take a little time. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just decrease the opacity of the shadows. So they're a little softer. 